Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of the Play on GAA podcast. This is a football edition. And for this weekend, we only have one match to look at from the club football championship. But what a game and a lot of talking points from this game. Parig Pierce's of Roscommon beating Mount Bellumoy lock from Galway by a goal and eight to a goal and seven. I have Luke here with me to discuss this match. Luke, Mount Bellumoy lock very heavily fancied by a lot of people to actually go on and win the club All Ireland. And they didn't even make the Connacht final. Knocked out by Parig Pierce's of Roscommon albeit a very controversial match. Yeah, I think, the, look, I suppose, first of all, again, the, kind of, the conditions really didn't help. I think Mount Value, my luck of the day, they're definitely kind of a quality kind of football inside and everything's well. And it's, it's another one of these situations. I think once these teams get to Croke Park, that, that's when they kind of come into their own. It was the same curve in every time that they might they drag their way through kind of Connacht. And then once they got to a wide open kind of Croke Park in better kind of spring conditions, then they were kind of like comfortably winning games. And I kind of could nearly see a similar path for Mount Belly, my luck, but they got dragged into an absolute arm wrestle there at the weekend by Pierce's. And uh, yeah, I suppose I like, I think this kind of the talk is like everywhere because uh, also from social media right now, kind of debates over uh, the scenes that we saw at the end, kind of the few decisions at the end. And look, I'm sure we're going to get into that right we're going to get into it right now, kind of what was what's been kind of said and what was done, I suppose, at the end of the game. But like it was pretty, uh, pretty ugly scenes. And uh, but I suppose, look, first of all, you just got to congratulate Pearson's uh, for the win. And look, they, they're going to be heavily favorites, I think, to win a kind of title based off this result. Yeah, without doubt, I fancy them in the final now to go on and beat Knock More of Mayo. And you made a good point there when you talked about the conditions because the second I saw the conditions, I thought. You know, Mount Belly are in a lot more trouble than people will give Pierce's the credit for. I mean, when you look at the Pierce's side, you've got the Dailies in there, Ronan and Niall, especially uh, players that I would constantly associate with Ross Common, dragging Mayo and Galway into really tough battles in Connacht. So obviously they're going to do the same for Parig Pierce's. They're battle hardened, they're tough, they're superb players in those conditions. They're real dogs, they're real tough, tough players. And I knew it was going to be trouble for Mount Belly and my luck. They were good football inside, but they hadn't really been in a test like this before. And Parry Pierce has definitely put them to the pin of their collar and got the win. Obviously, the late substitute, Tom Butler, coming on, kicking the winning point for Parry Pierce's four minutes into stoppage time. You know, huge blow to Mount Belly and my luck. And just before we get into the actual controversial decisions that the, the referee made, one thing we have to say is that is not acceptable. What the players did at the end, I think it was Barry McHugh went up and actually put hands on the ref, pushed them. I think the goalkeeper as well came out, did some sort of a push. I mean, I've, I've watched the video quite a few times now of the players' reaction. They were very intimidating right up in the referee's face. That is the tin end of the wedge. Make no mistake about this. If we allow that, if the GA allows that to creep in, it will happen again and again and again. I mean, you look at You look at football even in the Champions League, look how many teams are coached on how to get around the referee, put them under pressure, stuff like this. This is the tin end of the wedge. If Mount Belly and Moylock get away with nothing here, a lot of teams are going to think that they can put pressure on the referees and they will start to sneak into our game. This has to be clamped down on hard, in my opinion. Yeah, look, I think so. And uh, I suppose from this basis as well, when a player puts a hand on a referee, like the high profile example is Connolly, I suppose, in that game against Carlo, when there was the 12 week suspension. And look, I think anyone that was, uh, anyone that placed any hand on a referee in that game should be looking at a minimum of 12 weeks there as well, if there's any consistency in the rules. And look, I suppose, like, there's referees probably all around the country watching this kind of in despair that, uh, yeah, albeit that's like people can have their kind of complaints about decisions and stuff as well. But the kind of the, a situation where a referee at the end of the game kind of I'm, I'm sure referees kind of I haven't done it myself is that kind of sinking feeling at the end of a game when you're surrounded by people kind of letting you know kind of what they think about it it's uh, it's not a nice place to be whatsoever so uh, especially like to for it to go so far that a referee is actually shoved at the end of the game like it's, it's it, it can't be uh, that can't be allowed and uh, you'd like hopefully anyway there'll be uh, considerable bans like handed out to ensure that this kind of thing doesn't happen again because we're getting to a situation that any people watching at home 
kind of thinking about whether to become referees will look at that situation and then say like you'd be mad to do this so uh look just for the long term kind of uh kind of preservation of the game to have people to facilitate games as in referees like the GA have to make an example of this and to ensure that something like that doesn't happen and just briefly another point I think I don't think it was helped by kind of whoever was running the Mount Belly Moylock Twitter account at the end of the game when posting the final score to to write the name of the of the referee below the score and what county he's from as well it was clearly a kind of provocative uh tweet as well and look some if if the person that's running that account can't kind of control their emotions like that then they probably shouldn't be running it so it just uh it was kind of it was ugly enough scenes and uh yeah i think it was it was disappointing i suppose from uh from watching on like i know a lot of people are kind of defending it online nearly as well let's see the worst part saying that look he got it wrong and that the lad's been trained for however many points however many things to kind of and then they've been costed but like you can't, you can't, you it, it can't be get to a point when a referee has been uh, has been shoved at the end of a game. Yeah, I completely agree. And you made a good point there about the social media. I mean, the fact that he named them. I know that the referee, you know, doesn't take much to actually identify who the referee is, but to actually name him and name where he's from, I think it's a lot more dangerous than people realize. I mean, there's going to be a lot of hate if he's on Twitter or if he's on Instagram, or if he's on any sort of social media, there's going to be a wave of hate and me- very unpleasant messages coming towards him now from Mount Bellew Moylock fans, players and the like, I would imagine, because the way that they reacted, I mean, that's so petty. I know that it's a club championship semi-final in Connacht. I mean, I know you work so hard to get there, but he's a human being. You do not treat someone like that. You do not go up to a referee like that. That cannot, that cannot slip into our game. Our game is built on respect. And without the referee, there is no game. So that needs to be stamped out. I get it that emotions were running high, but you cannot do that. And, I mean, it just needs to be stamped out hard by the GA, in my opinion. Parry Pierce's got the win. Mount Bellium or Lock, the reality is, whatever about the decisions, if they were good enough to win the All-Ireland, they should have beaten Parry Pierce's. They should have been had the job done because Parry Pierce's, in my opinion, are not good enough to win the All-Ireland. So Mount Bellium were sour about the defeat, yes, some decisions went against them, but to actually put your hands on the referee, in my opinion, is bang out of order. And I think the GA should really, really look seriously at doing something about this. I mean, let's look at the decisions that actually caused this reaction at the end. Which out of these decisions do you think was the biggest one which kind of fueled these emotions? Well, look, I suppose based online, like you see kind of what... But everyone's kind of been posting. It nearly all seems to stem from the, the mark decision, I think. And uh, look, it, it did seem like it was a mark. The ball was kicked from outside the outside the 45. And it was caught clean by the forward who did signal it, kind of eventually did signal it. And look, for whatever reason, the ref didn't give it or something like that as well. But the thing is as well, when you see people commenting on this online, is that they for people that have actually refereed games try to enforce the mark they'll know how difficult it is for referees it's been brought in like personally for myself it's one of the the most challenging things i've had to do is to uh is to coach this is is tight is to referee this and to uh to kind of note has the ball traveled 20 meters was it cock clean was it kind of called for correctly and like is it is has every requirement for the mark been made so i completely understand why a referee might have been might have missed the mark and stuff like that as well. And for all the people online saying kind of uh, like how how terrible like the referee was for that game, like I'd encourage them all to uh, to enroll anyway up in the referee courses in their own club in January that's coming up, and then they'll see how difficult kind of uh, the mark is to uh, to enforce right now. So look, it's it's one of those I suppose that uh, like obviously look he probably got it wrong, and he'll ha- hold his hands up with that as well. But it's a, it's it, the game was probably going for about seventy minutes there, and it was a one point game as well. So look, you just got to accept that uh, that it, it doesn't all come down to that decision. They still could have defended it themselves, and that they still could have prevented Tom Butler from scoring the winner as well. So it's uh, yeah, you you can't solely lay the blame on a referee in the game that's put spaced out over seventy minutes. Yeah, no doubt. And you mentioned there yourself that obviously you're back in Parry Pierce's to go on and win the kind of final. What have you seen in this game that, you know, makes you believe that the most? 
Yeah, look, I suppose they they just they, they have a kind of drive about them as well. And it's a strong team. They've been there, kind of, they've done that as well. They've won their kind of championships in recent years. They've kind of emerged after Bridget's have kind of uh, fallen off a little bit as well. And they've taken over as the powerhouses in, in Roscommon right now. So I'm going to back that experience. Like the dailies as well have been uh, kind of the last couple of years, they've been inspirational figures in around kind of uh, Fordis Pierce's team. And I'm looking at them against Knockmore that... I think that on paper their team is far stronger than Knockmore, and I think they're going to bully Knockmore as well. So I'd be going. I'd I'd be fancying Pierce to win by maybe about five or six points in that kind of final. Going beyond that, uh, I'm a little less sure really. But it's again to a situation now where some of the kind of the big teams that everyone's kind of looking at, Kerfin are gone. Like some of the the powerhouses and Kerry, like the Doctor Croakses, aren't a factor this year as well. And stuff we're gonna have. Probably a new winner in, in, in Munster this year as well. In Leinster, like maybe Croaks might get through, but Croaks haven't looked amazing either as well. And then up in Ulster, any team can up, win up in Ulster. They're all beating each other up there now. So it's it's a huge opportunity for Pierce's. And I don't think that they're ever going to have a better chance to win in All-Ireland than this. Like I think there's a real pathway here. And as well, I think the club football championship is shaping up to be like really, really appetising in the sense that... Uh, like I think any team could win it and it's becoming increasingly harder to call where and we could be looking at a situation with an all iron club final with two teams that that potentially haven't even been there before. So it's a it's a really, really interesting one to keep watching. Yeah, without doubt. And obviously to see Mount Bellew gone having been tipped by so many people to actually go on and win the whole thing, I think that definitely shocked a lot of people. Yes, the conditions had a part to play, but they're gone now. And I think that will take a lot of people by surprise. So, guys, that is the end of the Play On GA podcast, football edition. We hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more content. Don't forget to look at our hurling video and our camogie video. And until the next episode, guys, take care.